So now let's look at solving this example. Calculate the mass in grams of 1.75 moles of water. So let's look at what we're given. We're given 1.75 moles of water, and we want the mass of water. Any time we are going between mole and mass or mass and mole, the conversion factor will always be molar mass. And the molar mass is something we have to calculate for each individual um, compound. So the molar mass is going to have this setup. One mole of water is going to be blank grams of water. And what we have to do is calculate the molar mass of water. So. Let's separate out our elements. Whoops. We have two hydrogen atoms, or two moles of hydrogen atoms in a mole of water, and one mole of oxygen atoms in a mole of water. And then we look on the periodic table to get their masses. Hydrogen is 1.01 gram, and oxygen is 16 grams. So I'm going to write my answers in correct sig figs here. When I multiply, this has 3, so my answer has 3. I multiply, this has 4, so my answer has 4. When I add, my answer is going to have as many places after the decimal point as the value with the least number of decimal points places. And they both have 2, so my answer will have 2. Whoops. 18.02 grams. So, the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams of water. So before we could even do our conversion, we had to take the time to calculate our molar mass. But now that we have our molar mass, now we can go ahead and do our railroad math. We have two moles of water, and when we're doing our calculations, the mass that we're going to get is going to be in grams. So grams and grams, I have two of everything. So we set up our railroad math with our given in the first compartment. So if I have moles of water here, I must have moles of water down in my denominator. So one mole of water is 18.02 grams of water and my moles of water cancel out. And my calculator tells me 31.535 grams of water. Now let's look at, does this answer make sense? This is almost two moles. A mole is 18 grams, so this is almost two times 18, so yes, my answer makes sense. Now let's look at sig figs. I'm given three sig figs to begin with, so this is my last allowable significant figure right here. I look to the right, 3 is not greater than 5, so my final answer in correct significant figures is 31.5 grams of water. Now pause the lecture and see if you can answer this question. Um, also see if you can name this compound, and they're kind enough to actually give you the mass of lead and oxygen. You just have to put in the correct units here. So I asked you to see if you could figure out what the name of this is. This is an ionic compound because it begins with a metal, lead. So we know that the name of the cation is going to be lead and that this name of this anion is oxide. Now because lead, whoops, because lead is over here, it has a variable charge. Remember, alkali metals, alkaline earth, aluminum, zinc, and silver always have the same charge, but all other metals have at least two charges available to them. So we've got to indicate what the charge of lead is, and we'll do that in Roman numerals. And the way we figure out the charge is we look at the total charge of our anion. We have two oxides and oxygen is two columns away from the noble gases, so that means its charge 
is negative 2. So the total charge due to these oxides is negative 4. And my lead has got to have a charge that cancels that out. So it's got to have a charge of plus 4. So the correct name of this is lead 4 oxide. Notice there's not a 4 anywhere in the formula. This 4 in Roman numeral is the charge of our cation. And the only way you can figure that out is by looking at what the charge of the anion is. OK, so let's look back at our problem. How many moles are in 50 grams of lead 4 oxide? So we're given 50 grams of lead 4 oxide, and we want moles of lead 4 oxide. To get between mass and moles, we need the molar mass. And to get the molar mass, we've got to calculate it. We've got to break down our formula element by element. I have one lead cation for two oxide anions. And so they gave us the masses of 207.2 grams for lead and then 16.00 grams for oxygen. So here's my answer in correct sig figs. And then we have to add And let's look at correct sake figs. This only has one place after the decimal point, so our answer should only have one place after the decimal. So one mole of lead 4 oxide is equal to 239.2 grams. Now we have our conversion factor, and we can follow through with the problem. OK, so if we do a unit check, grams, grams, moles, moles, I can go ahead and do my railroad math. I have grams of lead 4 oxide here, so grams of lead 4 oxide must go in the denominator. So 239.2 grams of lead 4 oxide is equal to 1 mole. Our grams of lead 4 oxide cancel out. And my calculator tells me 0.2090301. And my units are going to be grams. OK, first, does this make sense? Yes, this makes sense. A mole is about 250 grams. And so 50 grams is going to be about 20% of that. And so this absolutely makes sense. Now let's look at sig figs. My original value had three sig figs, one, two, three. That's my last allowable digit. 0 0.209 grams of lead 4 oxide is my correct answer expressed in significant figures.